Hisense and Amazon aren't exactly rivals by any measure of the word. In fact, until now, Hisense didn't even have e-readers in their lineup. But now they do. So it seems only fitting to put the latest Hisense up against the latest Kindle to see how they handle reading, manga, PDFs, and anything else. First, let's look at some specs. The Kindle has 32 gigs of onboard storage with a dual core processor at 207 gram overall device weight. The Hisense on the other hand has an octa-core processor with 64 gigs onboard storage and weighs only 177 grams. They both have 300 ppi, they both have USB-C and they both read a variety of formats. Screens are measured diagonally. The Kindle Paperwhite has a 6.8 inch screen or a 5.5 inch by 4.2 inch screen. The Hisense has a 6.7 or a 6 by 3, so you can see the dimensions are drastically different when it comes to how they display, even though they're virtually the exact same screen size. So unfortunately, because the Amazon doesn't have any audio whatsoever without tethering it to a speaker, in which case it wouldn't be the Amazon anymore, it would be the speaker, we can't compare anything like audio, video, sound, audiobooks, or anything of the sort because the Kindle just can't do any of that. We're also missing apps on a Kindle. The Kindle doesn't have any apps. You can't download anything, it's not running Android, and they don't have anything you can download officially from any sort of ecosystem whatsoever, whereas on the Hisense you can download download Amazon, you can download Aldico, you can download Google Drive, you can download Outlook Express where you can send emails and access YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. You can't do any of that on the Kindle, so it's just something we can't compare. But we can do, obviously, reading. So you can see that we said at the start of the video how these are pretty much the exact same screen size, 6.8, 6.7, but they look so different. The Hisense has so much more screen at the bottom, but it just looks so much smaller overall. And that's because when you measure a screen, you measure it diagonally. So even though they're almost the same, the diagonal measurement allows for the Amazon to appear significantly larger, even though it's only 0.1 inch bigger. So you can turn pages on both of these, of course, there's no issues whatsoever. Now you'll notice you're getting a lot of staining and you're getting page turn animations on here. And that is because this is essentially an Android superpower tablet. You have speed modes, you have all these different things that just the Amazon just doesn't have. So we can go to clear mode, in which case it's going to look significantly better. These both have 300 ppi, they both have the same kind of density, although I will note that on the naked eye, this screen looks further away from the surface than this does. I'm not sure why that is in the build quality, but there's a stronger gap between the actual top frame and the screen panel on the Kindle than there is on the Hisense. Also on the Hisense, you can use the volume controls to change buttons, which is really nice because it allows you to utilize this with one hand. The Kindle's a little bit harder to use with one hand because your hand just simply can't reach all the way over. There is a certain kind of 30-70 split where you can tap, but overall it's not as good of an ease of reading as the Hisense is. Because this is kind of like a cell phone, it's very familiar. You can just pick it up and away it goes. Although so essentially, in a fundamental form, they're the exact same. They both have the ability to long press, they both have the ability to change fonts, change different highlights, and you can share. You can share this as well to certain places. You have translations. Now, on the Kindle, you only get this. That's it. Nothing else. On the Hisense, you can download Kindle, you can download Nook, you can download Aldico, you can download Moon Plus Reader. The experience is only going to be as good as the app you're using on this, or as the Amazon, you're locked in. In terms of screen ratio, nothing is a better example than this. Look how elongated this is, meaning that when you snap to width, a screen like this is not suitable for a wide, flat experience of a PDF. Because look what happens. Essentially, diagonally, again, these are the same screen sizes. But look how night and day different they are. 
Now there's no shock that this is going to run PDFs because obviously it's a very capable device and you know it's flashing but you can go to your different modes, you can choose speed mode for example and then things just get so fast. That is a very fast experience. You might be surprised however that on the Amazon they weren't even able to use PDFs up until the Kindle Paperwhite 3. PDFs were too much for an Amazon to handle. In fact, they crashed, they forced closed, and they just simply couldn't open. So, needless to say, a lot has changed in the world of PDFs. Now, they both kind of do this page turn animation thing. The Kindle, although way slower, does this little kind of shadow swipe. It's very interesting and it's quite nice. Whereas this is more of a natural scroll. And you can peek on this as well because this is more of a multimedia tablet that's running a higher refresh rate and speed modes applicable so you can do things like that. Whereas on this, once you get past a certain threshold, you move about an inch, it triggers and it says you've changed the page and there's no coming back. You can't peek, you can't speed it up, you can't slow it down or anything like that. You're locked to the experience that this one brings to you. Whereas on this, you can put Adobe Reader, you can put any PDF reader you wish. When it comes to formatting, the Kindle is just so refined. Everything on this is going to look so good and it's going to be perfect every time. There's not going to be weird borders on the top or bottom or left and right. The margins are going to be spot on as everything is meant to work on here. Because of the inherent customizable nature of the Hisense, they kind of leave it up to you to do things to it, to install your own apps, to format it yourself, to sideload in your own content. And when you do that, you're getting things that just don't really fit. For example, you have these gigantic borders at the top and bottom, and it's not possible to get rid of unless you go like that. But then you're no longer snapping to the side. Things are getting cut off. So that's a little bit of a downside, although this is more flexible in that you can download anything you want and it looks just as good, it's just not the same when it comes to formatting. The Kindle is just so refined into its 5th generation of Paperwhite, 11th generation of Kindle altogether, there's a reason why Amazon's number one. You might think with the Hisense glow light on, wow that's a decent experience, until you pit it up against the Amazon. The Amazon destroys it in overall brightness, intensity, and clarity. Not only that, on the Hisense, you only have night mode, manual, auto, or off. That's it. On the Kindle, you have a warm light, which changes absolutely everything. As you can tell, on the Hisense, it's a very blue hue. And on the Amazon, it's a blue hue. However, you have a warm light to balance all that out. In fact, you can do an extreme candlelight as well. So it is very nice that the Amazon has that extra set of different degrees of Kelvin, Kelvin being the intensity of light. Whereas, although the Hisense line of devices is rather impressive and it's incredibly extensive, they have a lot of units under their belt, none of the units thus far have any sort of warm lighting. These devices are both technically ebook readers, on paper at least. The Kindle Paperwhite is a featureless electronic reading device with basically no other purpose in life than to read books. And it does it well. Very well. The Hisense on the other hand might as well just be a cell phone. It's a multimedia overpowered giant of an e-reader running Android 10. But people have decisions to make every single day in the consumer electronic e-paper world. And we hope this video shed some light on your choice. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.